Let's talk about all the steps, the things you got to do before you actually start putting wire into your boat project. Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. Welcome back to my shop. A lot of projects going on inside the boat works. I thought I would take a second and kind of bring you up to speed. I've primarily been working on the big boat in the shop. This is the 1986 Olbin 27 pocket trawler. I'm working towards getting to the point where I can start running some wire, laying down all the wire inside the boat for the electrical system. If you were to look at the big board, This would be the beginning of installing all the components under the electrical column on my list. When you try to put in all the systems, when you try to take a boat from a bare hull to something that actually works, what are the processes you follow? What are the steps to getting this done? This is what Motor City Boat Works is all about. This episode is all about how you design and plan and ultimately execute the installation of the electrical system in your boat. It's going to be a little bit of theory. I hope you stick with me. First, let's clarify. We're talking about long-term liveaboard sailboats or cruising power boats. If you're like me, when I started this process, I was thinking, I was wondering, what are the actual steps to putting in an electrical system? Like, where do you start? What do you do first? And then what comes next? So I looked through a bunch of books I had in my nautical library, and I watched a bunch of videos online. What I came to find out was that a lot of people are talking about electrical theory. They're talking about batteries and chargers and all sorts of things, but they're not actually talking about the process, the process of how do you put a system into your boat? It's one thing to refit something that's already there, replace this with that, or add something on. But what do you do when you have a completely blank slate and you have nothing but a bare hole and you're trying to put a system in, design a system that'll give you what you want? Some of them even take what I call the boogeyman approach. They like to dazzle you with a lot of technical speak about the electrical systems. And then they warn you that you're gonna blow up your batteries or burn out your alternator and, and all sorts of horrible things are gonna happen unless you hire a marine electrical consultant. I don't know if I necessarily believe in that. It seems kind of self-serving. What I do know is that putting in an electrical system in your boat is just like any other project that you might do in your boat restoration. There are some steps that you have to follow. There are some skills that you need to have. There's a procedure to kind of going about doing this. And you gotta be very honest with yourself about whether or not you have what it takes to do this sort of project. I think I'm pretty average in my marine electrical knowledge. I've taken a couple classes, some of them professional, some of them commercial classes. I've already done a couple boats with some smaller systems, pretty simple stuff. If you were to look at some of the boats that I've restored, you can get an idea kind of what my experience is like. Maybe it'll help you figure out where you fall on the spectrum. I personally have done everything from a boat that just ran off of AA batteries to doing something that had a, both a 120 volt and a 12 volt system and was for liveaboard ability. I would put my Alban 27 pocket trawler project somewhere a little bit beyond that. It's definitely in the more complex kind of end of the spectrum. I show you this because I think it's important for you to kind of gauge what your abilities are going to be. You got to be very honest with yourself to decide whether you can do something like this or do you really need to have someone help you or even do it for you. So back to the process. If we're talking about an electrical system for long-term liveaboard or cruising, I would say there's six steps to this process. Your boat electrical system install is multifaceted. There's a lot of different elements that are sometimes working together, sometimes competing against each other, but they're all part of the installation process and they all have to be negotiated in some way. I would say there's six parts to designing an electrical system for your boat. The first one is you have to come up with an electrical budget. 
An electrical budget is not just about money. We'll get to that later on. An electrical budget is all about how many amp hours, how much energy is going to be used by your electrical system. An electrical budget is a master list of all the loads that are placed on the system and how much each one of those loads, how much electricity they use. Once you have a master list and you get an idea of what your electrical budget is, well, suddenly you can figure out how big your alternator needs to be how big your solar panels, your batteries, how big the items need to be that are going to put electricity back into your system. You can even begin to do some cost value analysis where you start comparing what do I really need versus what do I really want? Which type of battery is going to be the best value for the cost? Which components are going to really give me the type of system that I need. I talked about this in an earlier episode where I discussed the challenges of using lithium batteries. In that episode, I talked about how you go about making an electrical budget. Be sure to check that episode out. The second thing you need is an electrical plan. You've got to understand what do you want your system to do? How do all the components work together? You need to think about how things are connected together. You need to consider redundancy. You've got to balance your needs versus your wants. Often this is done in some sort of a general schematic. It's kind of a layout. If the electrical budget is the roadmap for the install, well, the electrical plan is the actual map. Now, this may be beyond even the most competent amateur to try and put something like this together, especially on a complicated system. That's why I hired a marine electrical consultant. Bob Campbell's advice and expertise has proven to be invaluable. He saved me from numerous mistakes and quite a bit of money up front. He created my electrical plan and drew up the schematic. I'll make this available to the workers. Be sure to check it out. The third step in designing and installing your electrical system, you have to go through mock-up and templating. Even if you're doing a retrofit on an existing system, you still have to do mock-ups to make sure everything fits. In my case, this had to be done for the helm station and also for the electrical locker. My helm station mock-up was covered in a three-part video series. I take you through all the steps from the very beginning all the way to the moment of completion when the helm comes together with all the new instruments. Now we'll talk about the details for the electrical locker in a separate episode. I'll talk about why this concept is important and the benefits that you get from having everything centrally located on your boat. The mock-up and templating process can be tedious. You gotta be very precise. Trust me when I say it's not enough to just do this virtually or using some sort of CAD software. You've got to physically be able to see where things fit. You've got to check out the ergodynamics. You got to make sure there's no conflicts. This step may reveal a whole bunch of other issues that have to be resolved. You'll have to address them in kind. If you watch my channel, you already know Motor City Boatworks has no sponsors. I get no compensation from any of the products or the companies that I talk about on my YouTube channel. I do put links in the show description for some of the items that I use if you want to try and find them. Amazon does pay a small commission if you use those links. So now you're more than halfway along in the process of your boat electrical system design and installation, it's time to start purchasing and acquiring all of the electrical components, all the little items that you got to put inside your boat. It's time to go shopping, get that checkbook ready. You're going to be spending some money. A lot of amateur boat builders make the mistake of buying their electrical components too early. I know I made the exact same mistake and bought some items that turned out to be obsolete by the time I got around to actually doing the electrical system. No matter what the great deal is you think you're getting, be sure to wait until this point in your electrical system install, there's no point in buying things early. And the reason is simple. Your system is going to require some very specific equipment with very specific specs and capabilities. You're going to have to select that off the shelf to make sure everything is integrated and works properly. This is where your budgeting is really going to come into play. If you're smart, and you have a good budget, well, this is gonna be the fun part where you just start buying the things that you need. I've been very upfront on my channel talking about what it costs to do some of these projects in the boat works. I think it's important to attach a dollar sign 
do some of these projects that I do, if you don't attach a dollar sign to it, then you'll never kind of understand what it really takes to make some of these things happen. Let's be honest, most of us are paying for this out of pocket. We don't have people online giving us money to go ahead and pay for anything, do what we want. You gotta reach in your own wallet, you gotta pay for this yourself. And when you're the one breaking out the checkbook, well, you really gotta start paying attention to what you're doing. So let's take a moment, let's talk about what's it really costing to do this type of electrical system in my pocket troller. Turns out if you add up all the components that you need in order to do this type of electrical installation, it costs about $15,000 just for the materials alone. That includes the solar panels. Batteries are gonna be two to $3,000 to pull this system off. The main electrical panel alone is about $1,500. That includes the DC to DC charging. Some of these big ticket Victron blue items, they're hundreds if not a thousand thousand dollars or more. It includes the 3000 watt inverter and battery charger. It includes the alternator regulator. It includes all the fuses, all this sort of stuff. The only thing it doesn't include is the actual wiring and the end connectors and maybe some of the loom sheathing for some of the electrical stuff. I tell you this to put it in perspective, this is just a 27 foot pocket troller. You can only imagine what it would cost to outfit a converted 60 foot ocean racer or maybe a hurricane damaged catamaran. Remember, the bigger the boat you have, the more things you need, the more wire you're going to need. Everything has to be sized up, including your wallet. Now we come to the fifth step. You should be preparing your panel locations. The panel locations are going to be where you're actually going to mount the panels, your main electrical panel, any of your monitors, any of your other switches and things like that, all that stuff, all those holes need to be cut. You should have used your templates to kind of lay everything out. You know exactly where you want it to be. Well, now is the time to start cutting the holes. The reason you wait this late in the game to do this step is because now you hopefully already have your electrical components. You have the actual item and you can make sure that it fits. Trust me when I say that the dimensions you get off of the spec sheets from the manufacturers and things like that, they don't necessarily translate to the real world sometimes very well. You may have to do some fine tuning, some sanding to open up holes to ensure that panels fit properly inside a given space. Your sixth step is to make sure that everything is ABYC compliant. The American Boating and Yacht Council has guidelines that tell you exactly how things should be hooked up to ensure that they're safe and that they follow the best practices that are being used in the boat building industry. The reality is, is that you should have been following their guidelines all along through all of the steps to get to this point. These guidelines should have informed you about what equipment you should be buying, how everything's going to go together, how your electrical plan works. Some would even argue that the ABYC should have been at the beginning of this whole process. But I prefer to think of this step as the one that kind of acts as an umbrella over everything that you've done so far. If you're ever going to insure your boat, if you're ever going to sell your boat, you're going to need to take these things into consideration. It's always in the back of your mind. It's something you have to consider. Did you notice something? After all that, there's no mention of actually doing any wiring at all for the electrical system on the boat. That's because all of these little things have to be done well before we ever get to that point, before I ever start unrolling the first spool of wire. But don't worry, I'm sneaking up on it one step at a time. We're getting very close to the point where we're going to be able to put down some wire and this project's going to start moving along. I'll be back again soon with another episode. I want to thank you for stopping by and we'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you're thinking about restoring a classic sailboat or an old trawler, check out all of the videos on my YouTube channel. Consider joining the workers or taking advantage of my boat restoration consulting services. I offer personal coaching for your boat restoration project. Be sure to like and subscribe. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you.